Hello. Welcome to module nine of NPTEL NOC course on point set topology part two. Today we shall study retraction functor KX, which is closely related to the topic we are studying, namely local compact spaces. Let us denote the family of all Hausdorff spaces by the symbol H. Throughout this section, we should only deal with topological spaces which are Hausdorff and perhaps even not mentioning it specifically. Following the general practice, we shall consider various subfamilies of H and call them categories. Though the word category has a very special and very wonderful meaning in higher mathematics, at this point, it is not necessary for us to go into the details about that. For any topological space X, let this kappa X denote the family of all compounds Fact subsets of X. Okay, so this is a notation for families of all compact subsets of a given topological space. Now we define a, another topological space. This is KX. Please don't confuse with KX with kappa X. They are quite di distinct notations. Okay is kappa x to be the topological space, its underlying set is x itself, but the topology will be different. And what is the topology? It will be the co-induced topology from all the inclusion maps of all compact subsets of x. Okay, so this is a co-induced topology. Recall that the co-induced topology is nothing but the largest topology on X such that all these functions in this family are continuous. Once you declare a family of continuous functions from arbitrary space into X, okay, fix that family, take the largest family such that all the members of this family are continuous that is called the co-induced topology from this family since i am talking about the largest family there is only one that is called co-induced topology just to recall what this is from part one wherein we have studied these things very thoroughly so i have summed it, summed it up here it is equivalent to this definition of co-induced topology one, two, three. What are these three conditions? A subset U in the co-induced topology KX is open. If and only if K intersection U is open in K for all compact subsets of X. Now, instead of open, we have same condition with closed. A subset F of KX is closed if and only if f intersection k is closed in k for every compact subset k of x. The third condition is in terms of the continuous functions. A function from kx to y is continuous where y is any topological space. If and only if for every compact subset k of x the restriction map is the same thing as take eta k and then followed by f. Okay, eta k is the inclusion map. So that map from k to y is continuous for where k range is over all compact subsets and eta k is the inclusion map. Okay, so these are very easy to verify. If you if you don't know what is going to topology. You can take any one of them as, as the definition. 
often we will use the first one or second one sometimes we may have to use this one also okay now the following properties of kx are all straight forward the coinduced topology is always better or finer than the topology with which you are started with in this particular case see x is already topological space and eta k is a uh, inclusion map from from uh, compact subsets of k compact subsets of x itself right so before talking compact subsets of x x must be having a topology already eta k is r continuous if you take the topology on x the original topology but kx is the one with the maximum maximum number of open sets with this property it is a maximum topology it is the largest of all so in particular kx is a more open subsets than x therefore what happens kx to x is continuous the inclusion map is continuous if a kx is hostorf if x is hostorf why again kx has more open sets that's why it's hostorf if you take compact subsets of this new topological space kx they are not changed they are same thing as kx kappa x kappa of kx the same thing as kappa of x so this comes as a surprise a pleasant surprise because if there are more open sets there is a danger that the the topology may have such a property namely some k some compact set may not be compact in the new topology but here the thing is happening that is that is the good thing here the fourth fifth thing is the fourth thing is first of all if you take k of kx k x is a hostor space some space you can take k of that you don't get anything new it will be kx itself the fifth thing is a continuous function from x to y then underlying space is x to y in both cases but you now take x and k y new topology f will be continuous in the new topology is also okay so set of continuous functions from here to here hasn't changed either okay so finally we ask why do you need it at all so that will be explained so so kx to x is continuous i have explained already okay then two follows from one because they, 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 this has more open sets every single if it's open here there they have uh, two points can be separated uh, in this space so same open sets will serve here also okay as disjoint open subsets separating the given points now the third one needs a little more uh, explanation take a compact set here under the inclusion map which is continuous it will be compact here also so that is the beauty so all compact subsets here are here compact fine but suppose something is compact here why it is compact here that's what you need to understand right so if k is a compact subset in kx then from 1 it is compact in x also that is no problem on the converse if k is compact subset of x and u alpha is an open cover for k in kx what are open subsets of kx they have the property that when you intersect with any compact set they are open in in that compact set so k intersection u alpha these will be open in k obviously they will cover them these things will cover k k itself is a compact subset of see <laughs> i started the u alpha which are open subsets of kx but now k intersection u alpha are open subsets of k in the 
ओल्ड टपोलॉजी आर्डिनरी टपोलॉजी देयर फॉर दे विल एडमिट अ फाइनाइट कवर बट दैट इज द सेम कवर विल डू फॉर के इन द ओल्ड टपोलॉजी ऑल्सो के वंस यू हैव फाइनाइट कवर दैट इज अ थ्योरी सो इट विल कवर इन व्हाटएवर टपोलॉजी यू टेक ओके सो के इज कंटेंट इन साइड आई रिंग 1 टू 1 के इंटरसेक्शन यू ऑल फाइ So it contains the U R five union of U R five. Okay, so once the compact subsets of this one are same as this one, you use the inclusion maps from here to K X now. Okay, and induce a induce a topology. The maps are the same, sets are the same. Therefore, the Going to the induced topology will be also the same, right? So five follows from four. So the entire family, eta k from k to k x is the same. Whether you take k to k x or k to x, okay. So finally, I will have to verify five. What is the five? Start the continuous function in two topological spaces from x to y. Now pass on to k x and k y. These are new topologies. What is the relation? If you take k x to x, the inclusion map that is continuous. X to y is continuous. So after composing, I get k x to y the same function f. Thought of as a function from k x to y that is continuous, but I have to show it k x to k y is continuous. Now k y has obviously more open sets. Those open sets, extra open set, why they are in your image, which is same thing as same open set, why they are open subsets inside k x. Okay, under f inverse of those, structurally same, but new open sets have may have occurred here. Why they are open in K X? That is what we have to we have to check, right? So, given instead of open sets, you can do it with closed sets. So, let me do it with closed sets here. Given a subset F of Y, which is closed reading K Y, we have to show that F inverse of F is closed in K X. What is the criteria? Take a compact subset K. of x intersect it with f inverse of f show that that is closed in k that will do the job so we have to show that f inverse of k intersection with f inverse f intersection with k is closed in x now f is continuous from x to y okay therefore if you take l which is f of k that will be a compact subset of y therefore by the criteria for f to be closed in ky f intersection l is closed in y right hence f inverse of f intersection l which is f inverse of f intersection f inverse of l that is closed in x because f is continuous From x to y, so from y inverse image, I mean, I take when I am coming x, this is a closed subset. But now k is already contained in f inverse of l because l is nothing but f of k. Okay, therefore, f inverse of f intersection just k, same thing as f inverse of f intersection f inverse of l. You intersect k further. This this set is nothing but k. This is already closed. Therefore, this intersection with k is closed in k. Okay, so that is a closed subset. Is what we want to show. Okay, so that completes the proof of this lemma. All right. So we know something about this k x. Getting x out of k, uh, x out of some, you know, uh, out of x, we are getting some some other space. What is this space? How to identify it? 
what are its properties many properties you have already listed now we will name it and and then start studying it further the topological space x is called compactly generated if kx is equal to x so this is the general definition i am making which is the same thing as saying that remember identity map from kx to x is already continuous if it is continuous in the other way around also its inverse also continuous then it will be a homeomorphism that is just the same thing as saying kx is equal to x okay because already we know that the topology the underlying topo, the underlying set is the same and one topology is contained in the other the only way you want it is that the two topologies are the same so inclusion map must be a homeomorphism so that is the same thing as that inclusion map from x to kx is continuous one way we already know okay so such spaces are called compactly generated and remember we are already all the time working inside hausdorff spaces so far we have not paid much attention to that okay but we will keep insisting that we are using hausdorff spaces then we will have a notation cg compactly generated okay so this is another sub category now of the whole space of the topological spaces but inside the hausdorff spaces itself okay in particular starting with any x kx is always compactly generated okay so you see from general space to you are coming to some special so set of all compactly generated things is obviously smaller than all hausdorff spaces right we now come to the property of kx which we call functoriality okay or people also keep referring to canonical property and so on okay so this property makes this construction quite dear to topologies the associations this k from all hausdorff spaces to the compactly generated spaces the i which is an inclusion map actually i don't call it map because this h and c g are not necessarily sets so they can't be domains of functions <laughs> okay but that's why i have used this twiddling arrow here instead of straight arrow straight arrow to we are using straight arrow for in, indicating functions so here i am only calling them association of for all matters of our uh, importance they do behave like functions but there are satiric problems if you if you insist that h must be a set and so on that is not a set the collection of all objects all any all all of as soon as world world all is there you have to be very careful okay so so these two associations given by x going to kx y going to i y the same this is just inclusion map have the following very close relation nice properties start with any continuous function from x to y inside this larger space h inside this larger domain larger uh, category okay, that's why i am using category it is not a set and so on okay so take a function like this then same underlying set but topology is different f is continuous again so to distinguish this from f we will just denote it by kf because now we are thinking it of domain is domain and co domain are both compactly generated co induced by the collection of compact sets 
Okay, so that's why we will denote it by Kf. As a function, it is f itself. Given x belonging to h and y inside Cg, there is a natural bijection. So again, I've used the word natural, I'll explain it to you, but not in the statement of the theorem. Okay, what is the natural bijection? Depends upon y and x, of course. So all continuous functions, which I have denoted by apps, from iy to x, when I write iy, I have to think of this as compactly generated space. Okay, but now it is included as if an ordinary topological space doesn't matter because x is an ordinary topological space. When I come here, this is actually compactly generated space because it's here, but now x is converted into kx, so that's compactly generated space. So maps here and maps here are related by this psi. What is this? The old thing that we have done. Take any f, make it kf. So take any h, make it kh. Okay? So when you kh, actually you should write here ky, right? Ky to kx. But we already know that ky is y. Ky is y, that's why I'm writing like that. So this psi y x has a, has a new name, new symbol here. It is just the map h going to kh. Okay, so insist that this is a bijection. So let us understand that. Okay, the first part we have already seen. Kx to Ky, we have f of fk, f, uh, kf from kx to ky. Okay, so it's a restatement of our uh, part of the lemma for uh, Fifth, fifth statement of the previous lemma. The second part, all that I have to do is, I have to tell you what is the inverse image. Okay. One, one part I have said, h going to kh I have said. Okay. Take any y from y to kx, which is continuous. So what is the corresponding map here? The same map. The object of y to x is also continuous. Okay, so how do you see that? Kx to Ky, you have a function, right? Right? Ky to Y, the identity map is continuous. So compose. What do you have got? You have got from Kx to Ky to Y. Kx to Y you have got. Okay. But now you can think of, you know, east continuous from kx to this one, you must see that it's continuous from x to this itself. Okay. So by by inverse image of this one is given by pre-composing with the identity map from kx to x. Okay. So, okay. So if I have a map from arbitrary space to x, Okay, x to y, kx to, to continuous, kx to x to y, that will be continuous, into y, into ky, it will be automatically continuous. So, adjective natural, what is the meaning of natural isomorphism, is the following thing, though the symbol indicates that it has to follow this domain, the construction of these maps, that does not depend upon what domain you have. All the time, start the map and apply k vanka, k of that. So that is why this is natural, that is the meaning of this one. But this naturality property, technically we have to express like this, namely, given y1 and y2 inside cg, x1 and x2 inside h, maps g from y1 to y2, f from x1 to x2. These are totally arbitrary. Okay. Then we have such a di commutative diagram. Psi y2 x1 
psi y1 x2. These are defined already. What is the relation? No problem. Look at where, wherever you have maps f and g, you pre-compose and post-compose. Start with an h here. Okay. Look at f composite, h composite g. That will be from y1 to x2. Starting with a map from y2 to x1. So I don't know whether I have written compositions correctly. y2 to x1 is alpha. Okay. Then. Okay. y2 to x1, you have your uh, h, not alpha. All right, alpha is defined here. Alpha of H is F composite, H composite, G. G starts from Y1, goes to Y2. H from Y2 to X1. And then F from X1 to X2. That is what I read. F composite, H composite, G. Similarly here, you see, it is beta H is KF composite, H composite, G. So that is all you have to make. This is something here. Don't don't make H uh, R, K of alpha. Okay. Essentially, it is that. But better write completely what this will is. That is what I have done here. Instead of K alpha, beta is K alpha here. Okay. So so what what I have done? Start with start with any H from here to here. Y two to K X one this time. H once is here, you compose it, this one you come here. So now H is here, namely Y2 to KX1. Okay. G is from Y1 to Y2. H is from Y to KX1. F is from X1 to X2. So but you take KF, that is from KX1 to KX1. So that is why this map is from Y1 to KX2. So whether you first compose here and then apply K, then beta, or first compose it and then apply K, you get the same thing, which requires no proof because we have already seen all these things. The fact that K of Kx is Kx, that allows us to call K as a retraction retraction it is as if you know cg is sitting inside h and we are getting back a map which is identity on cg so that is the meaning of this if it is x is already cg then k of x will be x itself so in any case k of kx is kx okay so that is r square so r square is r that's like it's a retraction Okay, property one attracts the name functor, namely, not only the objects have been associated, the functions are also associated correspondingly. Okay, so with certain properties which we don't want to go into detail. So that 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 is the name functor is given. You know, attract retraction of functor is what I call. Property two makes it what is called as adjointness. The two associations, K and inclusion, they are adjoint of each other. Okay, this is a wonderful property. Now, finally, I want to come to one important, very, very important uh, use of this idea, namely this functor K namely compactly generatedness in the study of algebraic topology one of the central thing that we do is study maps from compact spaces into some space especially from the spheres you know all the spheres are compact set of all maps from the sphere into x all maps from sphere cross interval closed interval into x 
these are of prime importance in algebraic topology now if x is compactly generated then whether you take whether you take sorry you start with any x then if you look at map from sn to x it is the same thing as map from sn to kx why because sn is already compact therefore it's compactly generated therefore k of sn is sn itself so map studying from sn to any topological space is the same thing as studying from sn to kx that means what without loss of generality we can assume that kx is self x itself is compact or x itself is compactly generated so that will reduce lots of problems namely constructing such maps okay etc becomes easier that you have to do things only on compact subset this is not just this one i have just indicated this one it will help you in the study of homology functor also okay so here is an example which you must notice that given a giving a hoster space which is not compactly generated is not all that easy that is good because that just means that lot of uh, hoster spaces are compactly generated already so that is a happy situation however we will give you an example which is not all that difficult but it is not all that easy also so pay attention so here is an example of a hoster space which is not cg okay to start with n cross n where n is given the discrete topology so n cross n is also discrete space okay take one extra point like we do it in sierpinski space disjoint union with extra point i will denote it by infinity okay with the following topology now i have to define topology on the whole space x okay so a subset u of this x x is what n cross n union infinity okay x a subset of x is open mean in in that open means what it's in tau so i have defined this tau if filled on leaf f is a subset of n cross n that is one one condition if f is a subset of n cross n any subset it is open in right tau or second condition is there are finite subsets f1 n cross n f2 of n such that x minus u now i am putting a condition on x minus u is looks like a finite subset of n cross n union with you can call it n cross capital little n cross capital n as vertical line okay vertical lines n inside f2 just means that finitely many vertical lines so take a finite set of n cross n and finitely many vertical lines take the union if x minus u looks like this then u is open okay or there is one more condition x minus u intersects n cross n namely the now i am again looking at vertical line okay a vertical line intersection with x minus u is a finite set for all n okay so there are three different types of open set i will repeat the first one is all open subsets of n cross n all subsets of n cross n because they are all open subsets because this is a this is a discrete space or the complement should satisfy either 
two or three. What are these two? The th third one is easy to remember. Intersection with every vertical line must be finite. It may be empty. That certain lines may not be intersecting. But all, whatever is intersect, it's finite. That's OK. Such a set will be taken, and complement of such a set will be taken as open subsets inside, inside X. The second condition you have to understand carefully. Here, I am allowing in the complement full lines here, full vertical lines. But I am allowing only finitely many vertical lines in the complement, along with some more finite subsets of entropy. So, 2 and 3 are especially designed for what? Neighborhoods of infinity. If a, if a subset U does not contain infinity, then this condition 1 tells you what you have to do. What you have to do? Nothing. Any set which does not contain infinity is automatically open. 2 and 3 will give you neighborhoods of infinity. Okay. So this is somewhat unusual. So I have, uh, I am going through carefully here. So do you understand now that the description of this topology? It is very easy to check that this is a topology. All that you have to do is the neighborhoods are correct. Neighborhoods of infinity are correct because this part is already a topology. Okay, this is discrete there. So why? Suppose you take two of them here, two of them here, u1 and u2, what will be their intersection? The complements will be unions of such two things, right? By De Morgan law. Union of finite subset f1 and f2, union of either f1 and f1 prime, f2 and f2 prime will come. So such unions will be always. Or it may be like this, again, Intersection with each n is finite. Okay. If union of two such finite, finite, finite. When, when, suppose you have one here, one here. Then what happens? You have allowed some finite subset. Some finitely many things are there. Fine. Okay. So rest of them are all what? Rest of them are all finite here. Okay. So this condition will take care of this one. N cross N for these things are empty. So fine. Need not intersect. Right? Complement need not intersect. But if it contains some of them, it is full thing is this one. So, so take a topology like this. Okay. So that is going to give you something. What is that? So tau is a topology on X. That is fine. The subspace topology on n cross n is discrete. That is also fine because we started with n cross n as discrete space. But x tau itself is not discrete. Okay. Not all subsets are open. Once if something contains infinity, okay. It can't be arbitrary set. It has to satisfy either this condition or this condition. Okay, so it is not discrete. That's obvious. The third thing is here. X tau is actually a T4 space. It is Hausdorff and it is normal. Once again, because of n cross n is already discrete space, we have to verify it for only one of them contains infinity. For example, any point here can be separated from any point here because you can take this point itself as an open subset. And this complement is also an open subset because it's a closed subset also. So that will contain infinity. So that's over. So Hausdorffness is over. Similarly, you take a closed subset here and a closed subset here, which are disjoint. You must be able to show that it's normal. I will leave it to you. You must show it, it is an open subset. I mean, there are op disjoint open subsets. I will leave it to you to verify the normality. Okay, so it is a T4 space. 
the third fourth thing is for each n look at the vertical line union infinity this itself is a discrete closed subset of x all points of n cross n they are they are open that is fine okay so if i show that singleton infinity is open here then this will be discrete okay why singleton infinity is open inside this subspace y because you take singleton infinity union all other lines n cross n little is this n cross n you leave it out by property 3 that will be an open subset in the in the in x it is intersection with this one will be just singleton infinity so therefore the singleton infinity is open here okay so that proves that this is a discrete space why this is an open subset its complement is some subset of n cross n right so every subset of n cross n is open so this is a closed discrete subset final thing is very important thing here every compact subset of x is finite every compact subset of x is finite okay so let me i have already included a b c d let me prove e completely here that k be any compact subset of x if infinity is not there then k is a compact subset of the discrete space n cross n in a discrete space we know that every compact subset is finite so we are done but if infinity is there suppose assume that infinity is inside k then we shall show that infinity itself is an isolated point of k therefore if you remove that that is an open subset isolated singleton points are open subsets of the spaces so if you remove it the remaining set will be also compact because that will be a closed subset of the compacts but then that will be inside n cross n so that is finite therefore k will be finite so let us see why infinity is an isolated subset inside a compact subset k the proof is similar to what we did here but little more thing you have just examine the definition carefully okay from d yn which is n singleton n cross n union infinity is a closed subset of x that's what we have seen hence k intersection yn is compact because k is compact okay intersection with yn will be a closed subset of k so it will be compact subset of d compact subset of k itself again by d k intersection yn is finite okay k intersection yn okay is finite why because we have just now we have seen that this is a discrete space okay now take yn prime as y minus this yn minus infinity okay throw away the infinity so now you are inside n cross n but then this u which is equal to x minus all the yn primes okay that is a open neighborhood of infinity okay therefore moreover k intersection u is just infinity see what i have did i took k compact set intersected with each yn that is a finite set okay take yn prime as y minus yn minus infinity okay so throw away the infinity right then we still have these things are open subset or are closed subsets now because singleton infinity was a open subset of yn so these are open subsets these are these are closed subsets 
So x minus union of y ends, that is an open subset. Uh, it's a neighborhood of infinity, infinity still there because I have thrown away y infinity from here. So infinity is not in any of them. So when I throw x minus that infinity will be there. Okay. So you, this is an open subset because I have thrown away a closed subset. Right. So k intersection u is singleton infinity. So that is open subset of k. So this verifies 4. Or this verifies 5. So it follows that kx is a discrete space. Why? Because we have proved that every compact subset is finite. Take an open subset intersect it with the compact set. What do you get? You must have those things are open. Right? Automatically, if the finite subset is discrete space, they are open. Okay? And conversely. So, take any set open, take any set, okay, intersect it with the K, K is finite already. Right? So, all finite subsets are open. In particular, all singletons are open. In particular, so, that will mean that everything is open. So, Kx will be a discrete space. X is not discrete. Therefore, X is not equal to Kx. Okay. Just by adding one single point, Compactly generatedness has gone away. Okay. You may wonder, you see, n cross n is a discrete space. Is it compactly generated? Yes, of course. Any discrete space is compactly generated. Okay. Singleton sets are compact, therefore it's fine. Finite sets are compact, that's fine. Okay. But this CG is not compact. CG is not compactly generated. There are other closed subsets, other open subsets, which are not discrete. Okay. All right. So next time, we will study compactly generated spaces a little deeper. Okay. I have already told you why they are important and so on. Thank you.